In this um, tech video, I'm going to be installing a Centurion Arms C4 extended carbine length handguard onto a 10.5 inch uh, barreled upper receiver. Uh, you can see I've got the upper receiver in the vice block and I've actually went ahead and already removed um, a Magpul SL handguard. Um, so that part is already done. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging to try and remove something like this with it mounted in the vise. Um, so I did that off camera. Now the Centurion Arms um, C4 handguard, uh, which ships with uh, some decent uh, installation instructions, they um, basically um, mention two ways um, to remove your delta ring. And, and that needs to be removed before we can install that rail. So with, you've got two ways to do this. We can uh, take off the uh, barrel nut and remove the barrel and then remove the delta ring that way. Or we can uh, cut the delta ring and uh, at the 3 and the 9 o'clock position and remove that and then remove the uh, spring assembly and then of course what they don't mention um, which I'll mention is that I could actually remove this front gas block I could punch out these tapered uh, bolts remove the front gas block undo this slide it off take the delta ring apart uh, and put the barrel nut back on so Centurion Arms lists three way or two ways there's definitely three ways you could do it now the, the route I'm going to go, I can do any of the three and I've done them many, many times. But for the purpose of this video, um, I'm going to do it the easiest way. Which uh, the easiest more or less means for the person doing this at home who may not have all the specialized tools, torque wrenches, punches, and, and so on. So I'm going to cut this delta ring off. And what we need to do that is we're going to need a Dremel tool. Um, I use Dremel as a generic phrase, um, but um, I should correctly use the term rotary tool. I have a Black & Decker RTX rotary tool. I have several of these. I like them. They're nice and inexpensive. And you're going to need a cutoff wheel. Now, the instructions with this rail um, that Centurion Arms provides says to make cuts at the 3 and the 9 o'clock. Uh, given that I have this mounted here, um, I'm probably going to make a couple of cuts mm, probably at the 2 and 10 o'clock position uh, because I can just see better with it mounted here. And actually looking at this, this is a well-worn cutoff wheel by the way, um, I'm a little bit too close to the base of this um, upper receiver mount here that's in the vise so I'm probably not going to cut this right here uh, I'm gonna have to take this and put it on my bench and, and cut this and I'll do that off camera because this is probably going to take 15 or 20 minutes so I'm gonna make two cuts and remove one half of this Delta plastic delta ring and then remove the other half. Um, after I make the cuts I'll put it back in the vise and you can watch me take it apart and you never know you might get some gratuitous profanity out of me. Um, uh, it's always a possibility. So I'm going to go ahead and get the cutting of this off camera and we'll come back and um, see how the whole thing comes apart. Okay, after about uh, 10 minutes with the Dremel, uh, I've got two cuts um, at the 3 and 9 o'clock position here. Uh, it's probably going to take you uh, maybe a couple of cutting wheels uh, to get through this since the uh, um, actual delta ring itself is metal. Now, when uh, let me give you some tips about um, cutting this delta ring off. If you can, push back the delta ring a little bit and possibly put some little pieces of wood or something to kind of hold the delta ring back. 
Now the reason I, I recommend you do this is this front part of the delta ring, it's kind of hard to see how far you need to cut. And um, it's, it's pretty much a guarantee that you're going to nick up your barrel nut a little bit. And you can see right there I actually got a, a couple little jumps from the uh, Dremel where it, it nicked up one of the lugs on the barrel nut. Now that's not the, that's not the end of the day, um, but you've got this back half right here you can cut through fairly easy because when you actually cut through it you can see the metal springs um, but on this front part right here it's really hard to see because the front part of this delta ring is thicker and you don't want to just cut and cut and cut and then cut right into your barrel nuts so I found if I could uh, wedge something in there to hold this back I could kind of see a little bit better and what I ended up doing is I've got the front man there's just a little bit of material left on the front I didn't cut all the way through um, and I figured that with just a small amount of material left I could possibly use a flat blade screwdriver and break this uh, delta ring apart so that is uh, an assumption on my part. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try and do that part. Let's see, that side broke away pretty easy. There we go. Okay, so I, had, I left a little bit on each side and I used the flat blade to um, pop it apart the rest of the way and part of the spring came off because I believe I cut through that as well. So there's the metal delta ring removed. And I did put, actually I know you're looking at this going, well that's not very much masking tape to protect your barrel. Well, on the workbench I had a lot more tape on it, so I took off the rest of it. Uh, I wrapped this whole area with tape, uh, put a little piece of uh, cardboard around it, and the same over here. Uh, and the reason why is whenever you're using a high speed tool like this and you're cutting, these things have a tendency to jump around and if you're not careful it can jump around and uh, cut your well obviously it's not going to cut my gas tube because I'm cutting way down here but it could uh, damage your barrel or damage your upper receiver so a gratuitous amount of pr protection due to cardboard and tape is great uh, to protect the finish on your upper receiver if that's something that you care about all right so we are getting close. We have this uh, spring here, um, which part of it has been cut away. Um, and we might be able just to pull this off with a needle nose pliers. And that's probably the other part of it that was cut away during this process. And obviously, if it is not already apparent, your delta ring and your spring will no longer be usable when you're done. Um, also, do remember to wear protective goggles, which I wasn't wearing while I'm trying to pull this spring off. As the last thing you want to do is ruin your day by having a piece of metal fly up and pop you in your eyeball. Just doing a little bit of twisting to try and get this off. And I guess okay. So what do we have at the end of the day? I got a little bit of a nick right there, and I got a little bit of a nick over on the other side. Um, neither are going to in fact uh, affect the longevity of this barrel nut in any way shape or form and that's all there is to cutting off the barrel nut now if you do have the tools you can just go ahead and uh, remove your barrel nut remove the barrel and take the assembly off from the rear um, 
and then of course you would need to uh, reinstall your barrel nut, apply any uh, uh, like Aeroshell 33 grease, and then torque it down appropriately when you're done. Yeah, I'm just trying to get all the metal shavings off. Now before I proceed any further, I'm going to uh, take out my bluing pen and I'm going to touch up these little nicks. And uh, we'll be back with the installation of the Centurion C4 rail. Okay, now that I've got that touched up, um, the last thing I need to do is remove this split ring uh, right here. Uh, this split ring actually holds on the uh, delta spring and the delta ring. So uh, this is what you would remove if you took the whole barrel assembly off. You'd remove this and then you can remove everything from the rear. Now normally you need a uh, tool such as this, which is a split ring uh, pin removal tool. You may not have one of these. Um, I happen to have one. And um, it is probably not designed, this particular tool is not designed for working with these rings. Um, normally I cut these off and I may end up having to do that because the tips on this are not appropriate. But this is kind of what the tool looks like or at least what a tool for doing split rings looks like. And you can pry this apart as well if you've got a small flat blade screwdriver. Um, the only, one, only thing you want to definitely be careful of is, you know, this split ring is right next to your gas tube. Um, and I don't think it's a good idea that you work uh, right up in this area too much. You do not want to bend your gas tube. Um, you're going to have a bad day if that happens. And you can pop this off and or cut it. And I'm going to do this off camera. I'm actually uh, not going to waste your time, but uh, I'm either going to pry this off or I'm just going to get in there with a snip and I'm going to cut part of it off. Okay, using um, a needle nose pliers, um, I actually took this out of the vise and uh, put it uh, on my workbench here. Um, you can uh, bend this and snap off the top of it and remove this ring. Again, just be real careful you don't um, bend or damage your gas tube in any way um, and you can get this off if you do not have a split ring pliers that will work. Uh, again, this is another piece that will be removed and won't be used in the next step, which is the installation of the handguard. Okay, um, I was uh, looking over these <laughs> included installation instructions, and like I uh, already mentioned numerous times, uh, these installation instructions basically say all you need to do is remove the delta ring and, and the spring and the, the, the split ring, uh, which we've done. And I was doing a little bit of test fitting with this assembly, see how well it fits. And I've come to the conclusion that the handguard end cap needs to be removed as well. Now, this is not mentioned at all in the instructions. And I'm, you know, now at first I thought, well, you know, maybe I got a, a a rail that's designed for something else. But you know, this isn't a this is in fact the carbine length um, C4 rail. This is a carbine length gas system. So this is not going to fit over this handguard cap. So now our installation procedure has got a little bit more complicated. And it's all primarily due to the fact that the instructions included with this rail does not make any mention of this. So I don't understand how a manufacturer can write installation instructions and leave out this important fact. That is just slop. 
there's just no way around it. Um, and it's not a gigantic issue to remove this, but it is additional work and it's something that should be covered in the installation instructions. So shame on you Centurion Arms for providing incorrect installation instructions for your own product. All right. So with that rant over, um, what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to cut this off. Um, and you're going to need some tin snips, something heavy duty um, like, uh, for example, these. These are tin snips. And normally I don't cut this cap off. Uh, normally I'll remove the front sight base and remove this. But again, we're trying to do this. Uh, the poor man's way uh, who doesn't have all the necessary tools and jigs and punches and so on. So I'm going to cut this off. And ideally you'd want to remove this gas tube. So uh, we want to take a roll pin punch, uh, pop out this roll pin, uh, slide out the gas tube, and then that's going to free this up for me to do a lot of cutting. What I'm going to do off camera here real quick is I'm going to take a look and see if I can, tr if it's possible for me to cut this off without removing the gas tube. Uh, for you guys out there who don't have all the necessary tools, but um, so I'm going to take a look at that and see if that's feasible to do without damaging this gas tube. If not, um, then the next phase is we're going to jump into removing the gas tube and then I'll cut it off. Okay, I've decided that uh, trying to cut this off, I can probably get it cut, make some cuts on it and bend it back and forth and snap it off, but I don't want to risk that right around the gas tube. Um, again, you don't want to damage your gas tube, and then you're going to have all sorts of functionality issues. So the simplest thing to do is remove it. If these instructions were accurate from the get-go, I probably would have had all the tools necessary here. Um, in front of me and I would have removed the gas tube before I even started uh, cutting on the delta ring. But uh, so since I was misled, we're going to go forward um, and remove this gas tube now. Uh, I have a 1 uh, roll pin punch and I don't have my little hammer with me at the moment but uh, um, I've got a regular hammer and we should be able to pop this out. Um, actually, I have this assembly here resting on uh, a partial roll of masking tape and that's um, basically to allow the pin to be hammered out and support this to, so it doesn't move around. And that's all there is to removing the roll pin. So a uh, 1 16th roll pin punch or a 1 16th gas tube punch. Uh, grab your roll pin. And what we're going to do is slide this back, get it out of the way. Now is also a good time, um, if you're going to remove your, your gas tube, this is a good time to go ahead and clean it up. Um, you can see I've got a bit of fouling on this, it's not bad. And if you have a pipe cleaner, you can run a pipe cleaner through uh, at least one end of this, uh, try to clean out some of the residue on the inside. So I'm going to clean this up off camera. And now we're going to move on to uh, removing this. And I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the vise. Um, which uh, allows the camera to sit kind of out of my way because as it is right now I'm going to knock the camera over if I'm not careful. Okay, what I've decided to do was where the um, handguard end cap is thinnest towards the barrel is I'm, I'm going to make some snips with the tin snips right there. I guess in a pinch, if you didn't have tin snips, you could use a hacksaw or you could use your Dremel. Uh, again, you're going to be real close to the barrel and real close to your front sight base. So you want to definitely be real, real careful with that. 
Um, so let's see if I can make a couple of There's one cut. And we'll try to do a cut right here. And there's another cut. I think what might be handy in this situation is to have pliers. Bend some of this material back and out of the way. Okay. I got a couple of cuts there, so I know this is painfully boring to watch the, me cut and chop on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit more chopping, uh, enough to where I can bend this back and forth and snap it off. Uh, so let me get some more cuts in this. I'll pause the video and we'll come back and we'll see what kind of progress I make. Okay, what I've, what I've done is, is I've made um, several different cuts and of course I've been working on this side because this side's not in the way of the camera. Um, and using a pliers after you make a couple cuts you can grab a chunk of it and wiggle it back and forth. This is fairly soft metal so um, just by wiggling this back and forth, not necessarily twisting it but just kind of moving it back and forth, you fatigue the material after you place some cuts in it and it will uh, break off. So I have a big chunk on the other side um, broken off and basically just so you can kind of see how I'm doing it we're just kind of wiggling this material back and forth not not enough to uh, come in contact with the barrel of the front sight base but that's pretty much how we're doing it and we're just breaking off uh, enough chunks to where um, we can get this uh, off completely. I'm actually probably going to cut off another chunk right here. If I cut off another chunk right here I think I can slide the whole assembly off so I'm going to make some cuts right there and do some more wiggling with the pliers and uh, we'll see how that well that goes. Okay I got another chunk removed from this. Um, as you start to get some of this removed um, you can rotate this and what I did was I kind of rotated it and I'm going to cut another chunk off over here and hopefully I get enough to where I can just slide this off completely so um, this has only taken me about five minutes or so so this is going fairly quick um, it's soft metal and it's uh, it's getting there Okay, another two, three minutes. Um, grabbed it. Uh, I did a little twisting on one part of it and it slid right off. So, not an extremely complicated procedure to uh, remove this handguard cap. And you can definitely do this without damaging your barrel or damaging your front sight base. So, now that we've got that removed, um, we can look at uh, doing another test fit. Um, with the uh, Centurion C4 handguard and you can see um, there's a slot right here on the on the rear and that's where these uh, uh, notches from your uh, barrel nut uh, need to go and now we've got ourselves a fit um, I can't actually install this with uh, this upper in this mount. 
Uh, so I'm going to have to take this out and we're going to have to move over to the workbench to um, see the final procedure of installing uh, the handguard. Okay, um, I uh, did a little bit of test fitting with the uh, uh, handguard. Um, we look good. And now, of course, we need to put our gas tube back on. Um, like I previously mentioned, um, if, uh, if your, your gas tube is uh, dirty, uh, it's a good time to clean it up. And so mine's not too bad. And we're going to go ahead and get this reinstalled. Looks like I've got a little bit of carbon buildup right on the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean that up so that's all uh, slide in easier, and and uh, I'll resume the video in just a sec. Okay, um, once you get your gas tube um, reinstalled, uh, shouldn't definitely uh, should definitely not be a, a big issue to get that back in there. Um, one thing uh, that's easy to do is um, you can look through the, the, the hole in your front sight base as you slide your gas tube in and look for the hole in the gas tube and make sure the two are lined up. Uh, if you need to shine a light in the background over here so you can see through it, definitely do that. Uh, that's an easy way to make sure that your uh, gas tube is lined up with the hole before you start uh, running your um, roll pin back in there, or in hammering your roll pin back in there. So to do our roll pin um, installation, you should have, uh, ideally, in your kit, you should have a specialized roll pin holder. Um, that's a tool that looks like so, that is specifically designed to hold your roll pin. Actually, I have a specific roll pin holder just for the gas tubes. And of course, if you're looking for these types of tools, not everybody carries these. Uh, I don't carry these on my website, um, but um, you can get these from Brunel's, uh, brunels.com. Uh, this is a specialized uh, roll pin holder that's just for gas tube roll pins. Okay, it's pretty, pretty good. And back to our 1 16th uh, roll pin punch. Now, one thing I should notice, if you, uh, I should mention, if you're, if you're going to buy tools, the 1 16th roll pin punch is the thinnest out of all of your roll pins punches. And buy, uh, you should buy a good one. Um, this is a Lyman. Um, yeah, these are made by Lyman, and this one's already bent a couple of times. So, uh, although I, I like this set, um, a good stainless steel one um, would probably be a, a good investment, and that's probably what I'm going to have to buy, because this one eventually is going to snap on me. Sorry if you can't see exactly what I'm doing. Oh, what am I doing? I'm hammering. And I'm just trying to get it flush. And there we go. So, not a complicated procedure. It definitely goes much quicker uh, if you've got a roll pin holder and the proper roll pin punch. All right. Now with the gas block installed, or the uh, our uh, 
handguard cap removed, our gas tube cleaned and reinstalled, we can look at, oh, should I go back and read the instructions that came with the handguard? Okay, this basically is just talking about how to uh, insert screws, tighten the screws. Um, we've got four screws and two screws. Um, it's nice they give us the inch-pounds settings for torquing these screws down. Grade 8 bolts over here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Of course, this kit does not come with any of the necessary Allen keys for completing uh, this. And if you do any type of work like this on a regular basis, you probably have the necessary tools. And let me see. I'm going to have to track down some Allen keys for this. Okay, the bolts that come with this, uh, there's two different sizes. Um, the four larger ones are 964, and the two smaller ones, I'm not exactly sure what they are. I've got one Allen key here, um, but this particular one does not have a size on it. So, uh, I'm un unfortunately, the instructions don't say what it is either, but it is smaller. And, let's see, let's go back to the instructions again, so I kind of give somewhat of the appearance that I'm actually following them. And, okay, we're going to do the bottom first, and then we'll install the top. And we want to make sure that that lines up. And it does. You can see we've got an alignment and you can see that the uh, um, grenade, um, the lug for the grenade or the M203 grenade launcher is, is still visible. Like we really need those, but... And... Now the upper has got these two little tabs on the end of it right there, the upper part of this handguard. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that those two little tabs go on either side of your upper receiver. And then everything should slide together. Now you can kind of see what this looks like. Um, the two little tabs there and there, so our, our upper is aligned. Now these are where we're going to put our four larger 964 bolts and the two smaller ones go on the sides, one there and one there. So now we have it fitted in place. Um, the alignment looks good. Uh, those tabs automatically get your upper rail aligned with the rail on the upper receiver. So you don't need to clamp anything right over here to hold that in place. Uh, I'm holding it together with my hand right now. Um, so, going back to the instructions one more time. It says, insert a locking screw into one of the holes on the top of the handguard. Insert and, tight, insert and tighten locking screws in an X pattern, hand tighten only. Insert and screw in forward locking screws on each side, hand tighten only. The four screws in the back are to be tightened to 35 inch pounds the two screws on the front to 30 inch pounds and that's inch pounds um, so you're going to need a small bit type of torque wrench I'm sure in my previous videos you've seen uh, the particular tool that I use that uh, has inch pounds and I don't have that right here in front of me 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand tighten all of these bolts right now and later on I will tighten them down to the recommended torque specifications. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of these in. And pretty much like I thought, these uh, stainless steel threaded inserts have uh, some sort of locking um, thread locker on them. I can feel it when I'm tighten it, tightening these down. Of course, you also want to definitely be careful you don't cross thread anything. Um, I don't envision how that could be possible to cross thread this, but uh, if, if, if uh, the top and the bottom is aligned correctly, you shouldn't have any issues with cross threading. And I do apologize if you can't see absolutely everything. I'm trying to make sure it's kept in uh, frame for you. So we're getting those started. Okay, so if we go by the in, uh, instructions, they want you to tighten these down in an X pattern, which is do this, do that, do this, do that, or in some sort of combination. So uh, we're going to do maybe a half turn on each, and then move over, do a half turn, half turn. Uh, sort of like watching paint dry, watching someone tighten down bolts. I know. Okay, I'll do the rest of this off camera because it's, it's getting awful boring, I know. Okay, uh, let's move on to the front bolts. We'll just do that because that's probably going to be a lot more exciting. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, that's going to take some tightening. Um, the, it, these are going in tight because of the thread locker that's on here. And so I'm just being real careful as I get these started so they're not cross-threaded. Okay, so I've got all the bolts in. Um, this needs more tightening and I will save you the pain of watching me tighten bolts. I'll do this off camera and uh, we'll come back and um, we'll talk more about it. Okay, I've put the upper receiver back together and put it back on the lower, and uh, um, I, I like this handguard. Um, it is thicker than most of the handguards I use. Uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of partial to uh, the, the Troy Alphas and the Troy VTAC rails, and, and those are, um, those, those rails don't, or those handguards don't come with any rail sections on them, so they're real thin except for the areas that you decide to put a, a Picatinny rail. Um, this one's a little bit thicker, so um, it's it's going to take some getting used to. Um, I like the uh, extension that this provides, uh, basically where we get more of a usable rail area going all the way out here and all the way out here. So we have more space, so I can I can get my hand out further. I can mount flashlights or what have you further down on here. Uh, in this particular situation, I just have a sling loop right there. Um, the, there's a, um, a mount for the sling loop here, and there's one here, and of course there's two on the other side as well. Uh, so that's a, that's a good thing as well that comes built in with this particular uh, uh, Centurion rail. The uh, 
Uh, the other thing I didn't mention earlier was that uh, these appear to only be available in black. So if you run flat dark earth colors like I'm running, you're kind of going to have to do something with this rail. And I'm thinking um, some rail covers um, as well as some sort of a hand stop or an AFG in flat dark earth. Uh, that would spice it up a bit. And I'm, I'll do that in a separate video since this is an installation video. Uh, so stay tuned for uh, some reviews on the, uh, the Magpul XTM hand stop and the Magpul XTM uh, rail panels, uh, which I have. And uh, we'll see what I can come up with uh, on this particular rifle. So in closing, the fit and finish of this rail is excellent. I like the look of it on the 10 and a half inch upper. Uh, I like the functionality, the built-in sling uh, mounting points, uh, the quality of the construction. It goes together very well. Um, the only trouble, obviously, since you watched the video, the only trouble was the instructions didn't mention cutting off the handguard end cap or removing the end guard or the handguard end cap. Uh, that's not real troublesome per se, but it does make this uh, somewhat more of an advanced install. So um, it's not a complete drop-in solution. Uh, you do require some tools. Uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of work to get your delta ring and the delta spring off, uh, the split ring you, uh, you got to get off, and then of course the handguard end cap you've got to get off. Uh, aside from that, once you get all that, get past all of that, it's real easy to put on uh, and put together. So that's more or less going to wrap it up for the Centurion C4 carbine length extended rail assembly installation.